and a warm evening and welcoming you to another very special edition of Sunday Special on NTA Calibar. Today's edition is packed with potpourri of stories drawn from the government events, political activities, traditional setting and of course the educational sector. Tonight is also packed with activities in the sporting world. So it promises to be packed and um, we urge you to stay tuned and enjoy every moment, especially with you as our esteemed viewer. I am your guest, Maureen Liu Ajong. I will be right back after this time out. Governor Basio too says he remains resolute in the quest to leave Cross River State from the shackles of poverty to prosperity, which is already evident, even as he says reconciliation and cooperation of political opponents to actualize this quest. Governor said they is joining the third interdenominational solemn assembly on the theme forgiveness and reconciliation. Justina Edmo was there. solemn moment as the Cross River State Governor led a congregation of worshippers from different denominations to seek the glory of God upon the state. In accordance with the theme of the solemn assembly, the people are charged on forgiveness, reconciliation, love and unity for peace, progress and growth to thrive in the state. Whatever it is, is it political misunderstanding? Is it that your parents, you have you suspected them or you've gone somewhere and they say they are witches and wizards? Is it your sister, your friends, your neighbors? Is it the church, your members? Is it your colleagues or whatever it is? I'm here to ask you to please forgive me and forgive them. There is no love without forgiveness. So we must develop the capacity to forgive. Everyone out there. Don't continue to bear that hurt. Let what is inside you get out. Forgive and sleep well, and our state will grow. Governor too attributes part of the challenges negating growth and development of the state to the cry of pensioners, assuring that his administration is sanitizing the civil service, ridding it of ghost workers to ensure prompt payment of salaries and entitlements accrued. To you won't believe that as a small state that we are, we have 54,000 people on our bureau. But go to any office if you see up to 10 people. The last time we had proper records when Governor Ibuke was uh, governor, we had 18,000 people on our bill. Today we have, from where? Where are they? I wonder. Where are they? Because actually this government has made it clear that he must make that tweet. Out of the 54, we have paid 48,000 as at the time we bring that thing which are doing. It. Apart from Bible readings, Prayers were offered for the governor and his family, the state's executive council members, the people, and also for the growth of the states. In Calabar, Justina Itam, NTA News. View of the economic challenges in the country, Senator Asuka Ifenyong, representing Koshiva South and Central District, is embarking on economic intervention in the form of grants to the tune of 70 million naira with capital items to over 550 young persons and women in his territorial district to boost their businesses. Paul Ebel was at this symbolic presentation ceremony and now completes the story. 
one way to assist people to be financially strong viable and cater for themselves while not being dependent on politicians is by providing the necessary financial framework for self-reliance this senator asuko ekpeyong popularly referred to as the standard is facilitating with small scale medium enterprises development agency smaden in collaboration with Trust Fund Microfinance Bank Limited by providing small scale business grants for youths and women in the Southern Senatorial District. We know that the only way to lift people out of poverty truly is by ensuring that uh, they have some, some economic activity that is sustainable. That's what we're trying to drive. That's my belief, that's my ideology. It's not about giving someone a fish, it's teaching someone how to fish. But when you teach someone how to fish, you have to give the person the boat, give the person the net, and teach the person how to actually do the business. So that's what we've been able to do with this workshop and with this disbursement. This is not an empowerment, it's just a mini economic intervention. Um, we're doing it because we understand that times are hard now. We're doing it because we understand the, um, the situation of the economy right now, occasioned by uh, policy correction in the economy. We are doing this in support of our governor, uh, His Excellency Prince Basi II, the governor of Cross River State. We are also doing this to support the vision of our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in terms of the renewed hope agenda. We have the traditional grants which this program falls into for micro enterprises in Nigeria. This program is aimed most of the nano and micro enterprises that are mostly operating in the informal sector. I want to specially commend and appreciate our distinguished senator, Senator Ekbeyo, Nasuko Ekbeyo, for the zeal. I'll tell you something. We are handling this exercise of various consequences across the nation. Because of the enthusiasm and the zeal of your team later, this has to be the first time. Part of the economic intervention include grants of 200 and 100,000 Naira, tricycle to seven persons representing the local government areas that make up the senatorial district, fridges and deep freezers, sewing and grinding machines, among others. Some beneficiaries express their excitement and promise judicious use of the resources. I benefit 200,000 from him sincerely incites me. I am so happy. Little token I benefit from him, I'm going to add it to my little business that I'm doing, so at least for the money to grow. I've benefited Keke from our senatorial district, and I'm also grateful to God for not minding my gender decided to carry me along and not minding my age also. So I am so happy. And this because he's the best senator, he has remembered his people. A grant of 200,000. And I'm so happy to be very, very sincere. The best way to express my feelings is to let you know that God has blessed us with a wonderful senator because I know more to come. He has his people in mind. He has his people at heart. He's always representing, always doing whatever he said. Because right now, to be very, very sincere, that has really helped me in my little business. The people who sang the praises of the young senator for the gesture also appealed for more of such from all political leaders to stabilize the country. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Now, when people are united and peaceful, then development will strive in such an area. This was the cardinal message which took the center stage of activities during the 5th April Today celebration with the theme United and Strong April 2 at Atan Onoyo Menyamabatani in Odubani government area. Paul Ebel again witnessed the ceremony. If you have stayed in Cross River State for a while, you may not be unfamiliar with the word April 2. But what you may not know is the meaning and scope despite being used as the name of the army barracks in Calabar. Creating more awareness about the people is one of the essence of April Today's celebration, which is in its fifth anniversary 
as the five mother clans that form the block, namely Enyong, Ito, Idere, Eki, and Okwa in the Earthquake Kingdom, converge to strengthen their bond of unity. Being a riverine community and not accessible by road, all the sons and daughters of Ebrutu all over the country, one after the other, arrive and are conveyed by speedboats to the host community and after a procession heads to the venue of the event. But before then, with the recognition of the Northwestern Calabar Traditional Rulers Council by the Obong of Calabar, the council is officially constituted with the induction of the chairman and members. That concluded, starting with a solemn assembly at the main event, all speeches focus on the land and the people, history, resources, and common features of the Ebrutu as they sue for development. Every today would have to be greater, and as we keep coming, it becomes uh, expanded. And because it is basis of unity, it is basis of strength, and we believe that uh, by so doing, our people will start bonding, bonding very, very well. So there is hope for future. There is hope for future, and God's blessing is within. It's for everyone to Starting at the home front to unify for the interest of progress and development is a good idea. My suggestion is that going forward, we should bring in other able to communities across the states, that we will secure our cultural heritage, our brotherhood, our togetherness, we bring progress and prosperity amongst us. I am also an infant. So I'm here to support him in trying to unify his people of the color of the Northwest into a nationhood. I wish God to continue keeping him alive, give him good health to continue binding his people together in unity, in love and prosperity. Able to stay glamour for access road, standard markets, industries to drive the socio-economic life of the people who depend essentially on water and road transportation to reach the rest of the states. I thank the five modern clans because they were the originator, the initiator of the support. I say thank you so, so much because if we don't come together to say we exist, the world will not know that we exist. Awards of honor were presented to deserving sons and daughters of Ebrutu for their contributions to the development of the area. But I feel good. It's a, a kind of reward that your community will give to you and encourages you to do more. And you know, you are expected to put in more than you would expect the community to do for you. As people that have gone out and then um, we are being called to honor, we, we feel it's a privilege. And uh, we thank God for it and we thank our community for singling us out. To give this we will make all of you to be proud of us. We will give you a good report. Before you be in fit to honor us with what you have just done, for us to do otherwise without bringing a good report will not come out well for us. So, by the grace of God, we will make sure that we do the needful and bring development and progress to April 2 as a whole. A high point of the event was presentation of the Obong of Calabar message by its representative and cutting of the unity cake representing all the five mother clans of April 2 as well as cultural displays. <laughs> From a Tanonoyam community in Odukbani local government area of Cross River State, Paul Abel, NTA News. To addressing the recurrent damages occasioned by disasters in the country with its attendant consequence, 
The Director General of National Emergency Management Agency, Mustafa Abib, says the agency is poised to develop a national strategy action plan for disaster risk reduction for management of pre and post disaster period in the country in collaboration with African Union and UNDP. Oba Heisen reports that the DG who was represented by Obot Daniel stated this during the South South Zonal Stakeholders Workshop on developing national disaster risk reduction strategy and action plan held in Kalba. Tackle the challenges associated with disaster in the country, create needed awareness among stakeholders and the people in reducing fatality rate and damages stakeholders are brainstorming on national disaster risk reduction strategy and action plan as a policy tool in line with Sendai framework. This workshop is all about generating inputs on disaster profiles, challenges, prospects. The people from this zone will discuss, generate inputs on the particular issues concerning disaster risk reduction in the South South. The preparedness is more important than just waiting for a disaster to happen. Because we've had experiences of disaster in our country, it's important that we put in a lot more effort to ensure that we design a roadmap that will help us to be able to manage the consequences of this disaster as we, as we move on. Disaster management, in a nutshell, is consisting of two phases, crisis management and risk management. We are here to delve into risk management. Some participants appreciate NEMA for the initiative, which will enable them to utilize input to strengthen disaster risk reduction management in the country. We hope that all that we have done today will be transmitted into our legal frameworks in all the states. And with that, you will see that the result is that there must be a reduction in, in a risk that affects the people. It's been enlightening, it's been educating, and uh, most importantly, to contribute to the national policy of the nation. The DG further called on state governors in the South-South geopolitical zone to establish full structures of emergency management agencies to facilitate disaster management system in the zone. In Calabar, Oba Heisen, NTA News. Interhouse sports competition is part of academic curriculum which enables pupils and students in school to compete in a friendly manner with other houses in the same school environment. For the proprietors of Springfield School Truth Manor, Interhouse Sport is to foster team spirit and encourage personal development of the children. Erika Ivy reports that the general manager and a calabar they could lay a jibola. The State Commissioner of Police, Augustine Grima, and Commissioner for Information were among special guests who graced the occasion. The competing houses for the 2024 Springfield Interhouse Sport Competition include Sapphire for Yellow House, Emerald for Green, Ruby for Red, and Diamond for Blue House. The proprietors and the chairman of the occasion advise participating houses to abide by the rules and spirit of sportsmanship to encourage a healthy competition. Sports is very beneficial to the learners. It helps them to keep fit physically and mentally. And if they're involved in it, it will help them enhance their productivity. We use this to discover and promote talent. So I encourage every other school and advise them as well to try as much as they can to expand their curricula. Lighting of the Interhouse Sport Touch kick-started the event as the PTA executives inspected the Guard of Honor mounted by the Interhouse Sport organizers. Umbrella and cheerleaders dancers welcome guests at the event. There were track events participated by boys and girls, animal raised by junior school, as well as taekwondo display. Award of certificate, medals, and trophies were presented to winners. And at the end of the competition, 
Greenhouse emerged the winner with a total of 634 points. Red House with 589 points came second, while Yellow House clinched the third position with 585 points. <laughs> Guests at the occasion advise on sport development in the country, especially grooming from the elementary stage. Those who excel from here, if they are properly managed in their next stage of life, you will see them improve. And then you will see the national coaches inviting them to come, and then they can try their luck. This can be the next 100 meters uh, best in the world. Sport is actually part of education. That's where we have the physical and the health education. So it's essential to let the children know. Because, you know, these days children eat anyhow, they drink, they do anyhow. Springfield Sportmaster Michael Ine appraised the outcome of this year's competition, saying it has expanded beyond the previous years. The Emira House happened to come first at the end of the Interhouse Sport Competition. So I say big congratulations to them and to other houses. I want to use this opportunity to uh, encourage them to sit up. All right, I'm actually jubilating because of the victory of my children. It has been a lot of work and a lot of effort. Springfield School, located at Main Avenue, Calabar, was established in 2011. It is one of the fastest growing schools in Calabar South local government area with sound academic background. In Calabar, Erika Evie, NTA News. And that's it on Amnesty Night. Thanks for watching.